Today in this video, I am going to analyze two companies which are Hindalco Industries and National Aluminium. These are the only two companies worth investing and investigating into. The other group companies are very small net worth. So I have ignored those companies and we have just two companies to analyze today. And in this video, I'm going to do it a little differently in the sense I'm going to analyze them using graphs. The current market price of Hindalco is 197 rupees and National Aluminium or Nalco is 46 rupees. Hindalco, Hindalco has fallen 24% from where it was 52 weeks back and Nelco has fallen almost 42% from its 52 weeks high or where the price was one year back. So we see the higher the fall, the weaker the stock is, the less the fall, the stronger the price or the script is. So we want our scripts to fall as less as possible and also allow us to buy as low as possible. So although this creates an opportunity, 42% fall in national aluminium creates an opportunity, but provided other ratios are all intact and they are as per our criteria and as per our benchmark. These values are up till the latest 12 trailing months, but not up to date till 2019. So few of these ratios will be taking or using values from 2018 balance sheet and profit and loss account as and when in the future the financial statements are updated and the annual results are out i will again analyze these companies and the ratios will change at that time next we will look at the earnings per share of the latest 12 months and earnings yield of the latest 12 months. Earnings yield calculates what is the profit that the company has earned for each share. Higher the earnings yield, the better it is. Hindelco has earned 13% on each share and National Aluminium has earned a profit of 19% on each share. So even though National Aluminium's earnings per share was just 9 rupees, the price has also fallen as we saw 42% which brings up its yield or return on the share price to 19.8% whereas even though Indelco was paying uh, or earning 27 rupees per share its price was high and therefore the yield is considerably lower at 13.8%. Next, we'll look at the price to earnings ratio of these two companies using the latest 12 months data. Hindelco's price to earnings ratio is 9.2 times, meaning the price was 9.2 times higher than the company's earnings of 2019 or latest 12 trailing months. Here, both the price and the earnings per share is up to date. Whereas National Aluminium was available at just 4.9 times more than its earnings per share. So this helps us understand how much more are we paying for the company's shares against what the company has earned per share. So the lower the ratio, the better it is. Next we'll look at historically where the price earning was trading from five years on average and where the price earning was when looking at the last three years average. This helps us understand how the company's price was trading compared to the earnings on average over these two periods of five and three years. Hindelco's price earning of the last five years on average was was trading at 16.7 times more than its earnings and in the 
for national aluminium in the last five years it was trading at 15.5 times so these are still better because we want it to be below 25 times that's the benchmark that's the benchmark for my analysis other investors would like it to be lower or they can even think of buying at a higher multiple that all depends on the investors confidence in the company's stock or company's management when we look at the last three years price earning average in delco's price was quoting 21 times higher than its earnings whereas national aluminium since the last three years was available at a reasonable 14.9 times although both these companies are on average available below 25 times uh, in this case national aluminium seems to be available at a less multiple than hindalco next let us look at the current market price or where the price was compared to the operating cash flow here we would like to understand first of all these are all valuation metrics which helps us understand where the price is compared to different variables we already saw the earning variable here we are looking at the operating cash and free cash and comparing those with the current market price of the company this helps us understand in terms of cash earnings of the company through operating activity of the business what was the price this is a very important metric more important than the price earning that most investors look at this is because the earnings value includes all cash as well as non cash expenditure whereas the operating cash flow considers only the cash inflows and outflows out of the business through the operating activities of the business so this is has a very valid value than what you would find in earnings although earnings also has a value for investors i find ocf as a more correct value to look at than price earnings here too we want the price to ocf ratio to be below 25 times at least both these companies are trading at a good low multiples against the cash that is the price was only 4.1 times higher for hindalco against the cash earnings of the company as we go down to the cash flow from operations graph i'll explain there what exactly the operating cash flow means and nelco was available at 5.8 times its cash earnings in terms of free cash flow that is whatever cash the company earned through the ocf or operating cash flow activity out of that how much the company invested in buying of fixed assets and how much was left over to invest or use in the financing activity so basically the cash flow is divided into three parts and cash flow is a very important statement that investors should definitely look at so the cash flow is divided into three parts one is cash from operations cash from investing or cash in investing and finally cash from or in financing activity so these are the three activities that the business conducts and the cash flow divides the different transactions into different activities so that's that helps us understand exactly how much the company earned through operate operations of the business how much it invested or earned through investing activity investing would include buying of fixed assets buying of uh, fixed deposits or buying of mutual funds and so on in the business and finally finally financial activity would help us understand how much 
the company has paid as dividend or bonus or buyback or how much borrowing the, the company has done all those will go into the financing activity part so let us continue with the current market price to the free cash flow as i already explained the free cash flow is the value we get when we deduct the investments in buying of fixed assets from the operating cash flow that is whatever we have received or whatever the company has received through the operations of the business in cash out of that how much was used up in buying of fixed assets so we deduct that and what finally whatever we have is the free cash flow which can be used in in, in financing activity so here too we want it to be as low as possible the lower the value the better it is hindelco's price was quoting 5.6 times higher than the free cash flow so most both of these companies have a good free cash flow with them even nalco's price to free cash flow was 13.2 times higher than hindelco's but still better next let us look at where the price was compared to the book value of each share in this case book value represents the shares actual value as per the company's records or as per the company's accounts this is what the company thinks is the actual value of the share whereas the current market price is the price as per the investors in the market they determine the price in the market that's the market cap whereas book value is the price which is determined by the company itself this is calculated by clearing of all liabilities of the company by selling all assets and finally whatever positive value remains that is the book value per share for the shareholders which will be distributed to the shareholders so coming to our graph both hindalco and nalco had their current market price trading at a discount to its book value that is whatever the company was showing the per share value to be the current market price is below that and it is trading at discount to its actual shares value so this is a good time to buy into this companies again provided that all rest of the ratios are in order so we have around 64 ratios to look at in all next we'll look at where the price is compared to sales here all these ratios help us understand where the price is compared to different variables as i explained earlier in this case we are looking at per sh share sales value that is how much was the sales if we divide it by the number of shares and what was the per share sales value we use that to compare it against the current market price in this case the current market price or the total market cap was trading at discount to its sales in this case the sales are more than what the company's market cap is and the market cap is trading at discount it is 0.4 times of the sales or we can say it is 20% of the sales meaning these companies both of these companies are having a very high sales compared to what it is trading in the market what the company's total value is in the market so these are also a very good metric to look at because it helps us understand whether we are paying a high price against the sales and against the actual value of the shares so both of these companies have done uh, i would say both of these companies market cap has fallen below their sales value which creates a buying opportunity for us next we'll look at the profit growth rate over a period of 5 years that is how the profit has grown from 5 years back so let's say 5 years back if the company had earned 100 crores of profit after 5 years that is today we would definitely want it to be more than 100 crores so we want to see growth in the company's profit and higher the growth the better it is 
So in this case, the profit for Hindalco has grown over a period of five years at the rate of 11.8%. Whereas in the last three years, the profit growth rate has been much faster at 51%. So we see that it's much better to look at these values, like if in five years it was growing at 11%, then in three years, if it's growing at a much faster rate, then that is a bonus for us. It's a very good value to look at. In term, for Nelco, in the last five years, the profit was growing at 5.4%. But in the recent three years, or from three years back, we see a fall in profit of 14.8%. As investors, we would all, should always look at growth from both three years back as well as five years back. So that shows us that there is efficiency of the management in continuously increasing the profits of the company. Next, let us look at the PEG ratios or price earning to growth ratio of the last five years and price earnings to growth ratio, that is the profit growth of the last three years. These ratios help us understand the price earning multiple that we paid. Is that justified? Previously we saw we paid a certain multiples for both these companies against the, their earnings. Now here we want to understand how fast that earnings are growing. If the earnings remain constant, then it will take us that many years of multiple that we paid. For example, if we paid 20 times more than the earnings and the earnings don't grow, then it will take us 20 years. But if the earnings are growing or the profit growth rate is there, as we saw in the previous graph, if there is a profit growth rate, then we, our chances of recovering our invested capital will be much faster. So this is what PEG ratio helps us in understand. More than price earning, if you look at the PEG values, then that will help us understand how fast the price earning. So even in this case, even if you're paying, say, 30 times, but if you're getting a PEG of less than one time, then that is very good. And even the price earning of 30 would be justified in that case. Because when we are paying high multiple and we are getting high profit growth, that itself allows us a margin for the multiple high multiple that we have paid. So in this case, Hindelco's PG of the last five years was 0 0.6, which is below my benchmark of 1.5. Other investors would want it even below one times or at least one times. That is whatever is the price earning multiple in this case, for example, 20 times if you pay and we should get 20% growth rate in profit. So that gives us a PEG value of 1. In, in this case, Hindalco's PEG is 0 0.6 times and National Aluminium is at 0 0.9 times. Both these companies are trading at a good price earning or the price earning that we are paying for the five years or in the latest year is justified because we are also getting high profit growth. In the last three years, Hindalco's PEG is much better at 0 0.1 but National Aluminium saw a negative PEG because as we saw in the earlier chart there was a fall in the profit from last three years. If I take you back we see a 14% fall in profit so that means the PEG also turns negative minus 0 0.3. We want the PEG to be positive for both the years that is three years and five years. The PEG is calculated by dividing the price earning with the profit growth rate that we saw in the uh, earlier graphs. Next, we'll look at the sales growth rate. Sales is an important metric for investors to look at. This is the starting point from where the revenue is generated and it all expenses are deducted and finally we get the net profit value that all investors are interested in looking at. So if the sales are not growing, that also indicates that there is inefficiency in the management of the company or there is a less demand for the company's products. Whenever we see a 
fall or reduction in the demand for company's products it directly affects the sales profit and every aspect of the company so sales is a very important metric to look at in this graph we are looking at sales growth rate over a period of five years this is the compounded growth rate from where the sales was five years back Hindelco sales has been increasing at 7.5% from 5 years back till today and National Aluminium has managed a growth rate of 6.6% in sales over a period of 5 years whereas in the recent 3 years Hindelco's sales growth has fallen to 3.4 in 5 years it was growing at 7.5 but in the recent 3 years the sales has slowed down to 3.4 Whereas opposite is the case for National Aluminium where its 5 years growth rate was 6.6 .6, and in the recent 3 years the growth has increased to 8.8%. So this is what we are interested in looking at. In the recent 3 years the growth rate has to keep increasing and that helps us understand that there is either the company is doing something good to increase its sales. Although we saw earlier also although the sales were increasing for these companies for national aluminium the profit in the last three years has fallen by 14.8 percent so profit is increasing but sales are increasing but the profits are dropping in the last three years so this is not a good sign whereas for Hindelco we saw a mild increase in growth rate in profit but uh, in sales but the profits were growing at 51.5%. So we want the sales to be growing at least above 10% or whatever is the average of the peer group companies. Next we are looking at a return on equity of the last 5 years on average and comparing it with the latest ROE of 2018 because we don't have the values updated till 2019. So here we are trying to understand what was the profit that the company earned on shareholders money or money invested by us into the company. We want the return on equity over the last five years on average to be at least 15 percent that is the company has to be earning at least 15 percent on the money that we have invested into the company we see both the companies uh, Hindelco as well as National Aluminium on average over the last five years have a very low ROEs of 5.1 and 6.6 percent generally such low ROE are risky because the companies this is what we can also expect from banks to earn so if the company is giving just 6.6% or 5.1% how does that justify the investment decision that we are taking this could also be low because these companies may have picked up very high money or high uh, amount from the shareholders which would then make the numerator that is the value of the equity very high compared to what the company's profits are. So we have to understand not only what the peer group companies are doing but also how individually these companies are earning on shareholders money in the latest ROE that is 2018 Hindelco's return on equity value has shot up to 9.5 percent although good better than the five years average but not as per the criteria that I am looking at of 15 percent at least for national aluminium the recent ROE has also been slightly above its five years average although not that much to talk about but slightly improved from its five years average. Next we'll look at
the return on capital employed. In this case, the return on capital employed is composed of uh, EBIT, the earning before interest and tax. And we divide this by the average capital employed into the business. So in this case, the return that is the profit value is the EBIT value, EBIT. And the capital employed is basically the fixed assets of the company, the total fixed assets of the company plus the working capital employed. So that is what is composed of capital employed. So this helps us understand if the company has deployed all its fixed assets and whatever working capital are, is there, then how much return the company has earned on that. Here also we want the ROCE to be at least 15% and above. And we see both these companies both over a five years average period as well as in the latest return on capital employed of 2018 have not managed more than 11% in all. Although National Aluminium's average ROCE as well as latest ROCE both are good and also slightly nearing its 15%, it is way below the benchmark. Hindelco's return on capital employed is poor. That is whatever assets, fixed assets it has employed into the business along with working capital. On that, the company's habit is not enough. Hindelco's ROCE is 6.8% on five years average, whereas recent ROCE is 9.6%. And national aluminium's five years average is 10.8%. And its recent ROC is 11.6%. Next, we'll look at the return on assets over last five years on average and the asset turnover, that is how much the assets were turned over into sales or how many times more the assets were turned over into sales. In return on assets, we have to understand what it is composed of. In this case, returns is the profit or net profit of the company and assets in this case is the total assets employed into the business. That is the balance sheet total. And from that we deduct current liabilities. So in this case, we are looking at a more holistic view of all the assets being deployed less the current liabilities because these liabilities are not what is employed or it is the money that has been received from outside or has to be paid like creditors and so on. So we don't consider the current liabilities and this ROA value gives us a, a big picture of the company on how much the profit was compared to the total assets employed into the business. This will be of course less than the return on capital employed because here we are using a much bigger numerator than ROCE where it was using fixed assets plus working capital. I don't have a benchmark for return on assets but we want it even if it, uh, whatever the value is the higher the better. National Aluminium has a return on assets of 6.4%. It means it's managing its assets very well and the profit that it is earning on the assets employed is high. Compared to Hindelco, the asset that it had employed into the business may be huge because of which the profit becomes very small when compared to the assets that the company has employed into the business. So here we want the value to be as high as possible. And in terms of asset turnover, as I explained earlier, this is the, the number of times the assets employed into the business has been turned over into sales. In this case, we want it to be as high as possible. That is the ratios have to be as high as possible. So the higher the multiple, the better it is the better the assets have been employed into the business. 
हिंडल को मैनेजमेंट हैज टर्न ओवर और एम्प्लॉयड इट्स एसेट्स इन टू द बिजनेस एंड द सेल्स अगेंस्ट दैट वॉज वन पॉइंट वन टाइम्स मीनिंग द एसेट्स हैव बिन टर्न ओवर इन टू द सेल्स एट मल्टीपल ऑफ वन पॉइंट वन टाइम्स वॉट एवर एसेट्स वर एम्प्लॉयड इन टू द बिजनेस द सेल्स सीम्स टू बी ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल इन टू दैट वेर एज नेल्कोज और नेशनल एल्यूमिनियम्स सेल्स वर लेस दैन वॉट एवर एसेट्स दैट द कंपनी हैज मैनेज हैज डिप्लॉयड इन टू द बिजनेस दिस एसेट टर्न ओवर इज ऑफ द लेटेस्ट ईयर ऑफ ट्वेंटी एटीन ईयर द रिटर्न ऑन एसेट्स इज ऑफ फाइव ईयर्स ऑन एवरेज so this will be a little misleading because earlier i said that national aluminium on average of 5 years has earned 6.4% return on assets that is profit value whereas here we are comparing it with sales assets compared with sales so these ratios help us understand different perspectives of the company how well they are managing their different variables and these ratios are very useful in understanding the overall working and the management efficiency next next we are going to look at the profit after tax value and compare it with the cash from operations that is how much of the profit that the company has shown in the last 5 years these are all 5 years total aggregate values so we here we are trying to understand whatever the profit that the company has shown how much of that has actually got converted into cash and out of that cash that the company has earned through operations so out of the cash that the company has earned from operations over the last 5 years how much of that was used up in buying of fixed assets and how much was left over as free cash flow to be used or utilized in the financing activity of the business this is a very important graph to look at because it gives us a true picture of the earnings against the cash earnings and finally how much of that has been left over free for distribution in financing activity the green represents the profit after tax the orange represents the cash coming in from operations over a period of 5 years and blue represents the free cash flow of the last 5 years the company's profit of 10630 crores was shown by hindalco and the cash coming in through the operating activity was 50000 cr which is almost 5 times more this is what we are look trying to look at even if the company's profits are less but the cash coming in is high then that's a very good value although we want it to be almost equal but the more the better and out of that 50000 cr almost 25000 is still left over as free cash meaning the balance was used in buying of fixed assets for national aluminium the profit coming in in the last 5 years was 3927 cr against which the company's cash coming in was 5285 that is more than the profit that the company showed the cash came in and out of the cash again 50, almost 50% was used up in buying of fixed assets and the balance of 2226 cr is left over as free cash flow as we can see from the graph itself it is very clear that this is a big company hindalco is a very high net worth company compared with nelco national aluminium company here itself it very clearly shows the cash of the companies are almost 10 times more than national aluminium that is hindalco's cash coming in is 10 times higher than national aluminium let us understand the percentages in the next graph the cash flow 
to the profit after tax. This is what we saw earlier. The cash coming in through operations was 374% more than its five years average for Hindelco. Whereas National Aluminium's cash was 35 times higher than its profit. So this can be verified by looking at this. From 10,630, 50,000 is basically 3.7 times higher or 374% more. And from 3927 to 5285, percentage wise, it is 35%. So we want the cash flow from operations to be more than the profit. So the percentage wise, then we want it to be positive. We don't want the cash coming in through operating activity to be less than what the company is showing as earnings. And this is a total of last five years. So it gives a very good picture of how the company has managed its profits and its cash. So as we saw earlier, this company's return on equity was less. That is because the profit value was less. But in terms of cash, it is earning almost five times higher than the, in terms of cash, it is earning five times higher than the earnings or the profit of the company. In terms of free cash flow, that is how much of the cash earned through operations was used up in buying of fixed assets and how much was left over as free cash flow. We want these values to be not exceeding 50%, that is not more than 50% of the cash coming through operations has or should be utilized in buying of fixed assets. This is just a benchmark that I have created for myself. It is not a static thing. If the company has potential to grow, then it can use more of the cash from operations into buying of fixed assets. So therefore, we'll see a higher percentage of cash used up in buying of fixed assets. Hindelco's Hindelco industry has used up 49% of its cash from operations into buying of fixed assets, whereas National Aluminum has used 57%. So the, both these companies have used up almost a similar amount of the cash from operations into buying of fixed assets. Next, we'll look at the annual profit of the latest five years excuse me, the profit after tax of the latest year, that is 2018, and compare it with the cash from operations of the latest year. In the previous graph, we looked at the five years profit and cash flow comparison. In this graph, we are looking at the latest. In this case, we are looking at the 2018 profit after tax value compared with cash from operations of the latest year, that is 2018 again. So this gives us the very current view of the company's conversion cycle of earnings into cash. Hindelco's cash or profit was 4,800 CR in the 2018 year, whereas the cash coming in was 10,000 CR, which is 126% more than its earnings, that is cash was 126% or you can say 1.26 times more than its earnings. Whereas National Aluminium's cash was 104% more than its earnings. Its earnings or profit was 719 CR in 2018, whereas the cash coming in through operations was 1467, which is 1.04 times more. Here we are trying to understand and we want these values to be positive that is cash coming in through operations has to be more than the profit after tax. Normally we should look at a value of profit before tax but since I don't have that value or the data that I have picked up from screener doesn't allow me the profit before tax value, I am considering the profit after tax.
Next, we'll look at the average profit that the company has earned and compare it with the latest year's profit, 2018's profit. And this will help us understand how the latest profit is compared against its five years average. So we want the latest profit to be above its five years average. That shows a sign of positivity. Hindalco's five years average profit was 2,126 CR, whereas its latest 2018 profit was 4,809 CR, which is almost double of its average. National Aluminium's average profit was 785, and the recent profit has fallen below its average by some percentage, but value-wise it has fallen to 719 CR. Let us look at the percentage-wise drop. The profit after tax of the latest year for Hindelco is 1.26 times more or 126% more than its five years average. Whereas National Aluminium's latest profit is 120% above its five years average. There was an error in my graph for the profit after tax. I was using the profit after tax of the 2018 value but right now I'm using profit after tax of the latest 12 months. Here, these profit values are excluding the extraordinary items. That is, these profit values don't include extraordinary items or extraordinary gains or extraordinary losses. If there are losses, then they are added back and if there are gains, they are removed out. So in this case, we see that the correct values for the profit after tax values is Hindalco 4,800 CR in the latest 12 months, whereas National Aluminium had earned 1,725 CR. And its average PAT was 785, uh, whereas Hindel Hindelco's average profit after tax was 2,126. So now when we look at the profit after tax of the latest 12 months, and compare it with the five years average then we see the correct values of 126 percent gain for Hindalco that is its current year's profit or the latest 12 months profit was 1.2 times higher than its five years average and National Aluminium's recent 12 months profit is 1.2 times higher than its five years average in terms of profit growth year on year, these values include comparison between 2017 and 2018 profit values. Hindelco's profit from 2017 to 2018 grew by 149 percent, whereas National Aluminium Company's profit growth was just 3 percent. Here we want it to be as high as possible. Here too. In terms of growth above its five years average these two we want it to be as high as possible next we'll look at the quarterly data of the sales and profit this is the year-on-year -year growth rate that is from March to March comparison of these two quarters Hindelco's sales from March 2019 quarter to March 2018 quarter saw a growth in sales of 6% but at the same time the profit fell by 37% whereas National Aluminium's year-on-year -year sales dropped by 3% but there was a growth in profit of 13%. So we want even though sales has fallen we even if it had been positive if it had been positive then that would have been much better than it being negative. Although it was a minor fall from one year ago, but National Aluminium seems to have done much better in terms of growing its sales and profit year on year. Next, we'll look at the sequential quarter on quarter growth in sales and profit. This is the December quarter compared with the March 2019. December of 2018 compared with March 2019. 
Hindalco's sales has grown by 4%, but the profit fell by 5%. And in case of national aluminium, although the sales had it just increased by 2%, the profit sequentially fell by 23%. But as we saw earlier, year-on-year -year growth rate was much better for national aluminium. Here, we don't want to see a fall in profits or fall in sales. We would want to see a positive growth rate. The higher, the better. Next, we'll look at the net worth of these companies. What is the actual value of the company? Not the market cap, but the actual value when all liabilities are paid off by selling all assets and whatever remains is the net worth of the company or actual value of the company which is then used to pay off the shareholders or distributed to the shareholders and we'll also look at the contingent liability of the company and compare it with the net worth that is how much contingent liability each company was carrying against its net worth these are the liabilities or contingent liabilities are those liabilities which may or may not arise in the future but for which the company may or may not have to pay now the thing here is that these contingent liabilities are not disclosed in the balance sheet these are disclosed separately in the notes section of the financial statement so as investors we have to be very careful that the company is not carrying huge contingent liability because these are hidden liabilities which may turn up in the future and for my benchmark i don't want the contingent liability to exceed 20 percent of the net worth this is a benchmark that i have chosen others can increase it or decrease it as per their risk taking capability Hindelco's net worth was 54,000 CR and National Aluminium's net worth was 10,485 CR. Here itself we can see that the size difference in these companies. Hindelco's contingent liability was 1,500 CR which was just 3% of its net worth which is a good sign. For National Aluminium the net worth was 10,485 CR whereas its contingent liability stood at 2,552 CR which is 24% of its net worth. So here it has exceeded my benchmark slightly by 4%. Up till 20% it's okay anything above that looks little risky. Although this has just passed the benchmark we can still ignore it. Next, let us look at the debt to equity ratio. Then we'll also look at debt to profit ratio, meaning where the debt of the company was compared to the profit or how, how much was the borrowings of the company against what the company earned as profit in the latest year. And finally, we'll look at the interest coverage. The interest coverage is basically the habit that the company has earned or earnings before interest and tax and on that operating profit figure what was the interest paid by the company. This shows us the multiple between interest paid and profit earned or operating profit earned. All these ratios are very important. So let us start with debt to equity. We want the debt to equity to be less than one times for these companies in which we are investing. That signifies that the company's debt or borrowings is not higher than what it received through shareholders or through as equity. Whenever the company's borrowings exceed the equity value then it means it will have to pay more finance cost against those borrowings which would eventually reduce the profit which goes to the shareholders. So for me I would want the debt to equity ratio to be as low as possible and below one times at least. 
Hindelco's debt to equity was one times. National Aluminium's debt was, it's, it's a debt-free company, so there's no debt on it. Hindelco's debt or borrowings was eight times higher, 8.6 times higher than this year's profit. So if we look in terms of pure profit, the company would require 8.6 years of profits using current year's profit as constant value. It will take 8.6 years to clear off its borrowings. Whereas Indelco, since it didn't have any borrowings or any debt, it can very easily pay off. Or in fact, it doesn't have anything to pay off using so entire profit goes to the shareholders because the com indelco has a debt of one times and its borrowings are 8.6 times higher than its profits therefore its coverage is low because of a high debt it has to pay more interest against the abit that it has earned therefore its abit is only 2.7 times higher than the interest it paid Whereas National Aluminium had the l very low interest cost. Therefore, entire EBIT went into the profit figure which goes to the shareholders. Therefore, we want these ratios of interest coverage to be at least four and more than four times. Anything below four times means that the company has a high interest cost and that can create a problem in the future. Next let us look at the promoter holding and pledge of their shares. Hindelco and National Aluminium had a high promoter holding although National Aluminium's promoters hold 52% which is higher than Hindelco's none of the promoters have pledged their shares. Now why this is important to look at is because when we see a high promoter holding it automatically means that the promoter's stake in the business is high and therefore we would assume that the promoters will likely work for increasing the efficiency of the company, the profits of the company and the promoters would want to see the company growing year on year which would not only benefit them but also benefit us as minority shareholders. Now regarding the pledge shares, these are the shares which the promoters may have pledged with the banks to raise loans which they can use for their personal need requirements or they may invest back into the company. But here I don't want the pledge shares as my benchmark. I don't want the pledge shares to exceed 20% of the promoter's holding. Anything above 20% pledge means there is a very high likelihood of the promoters exiting in indirectly instead of selling the shares they are pledging it, raising money on it and if the promoters by chance don't clear off those pledge that they have taken or raised against their holding then in all likelihood the banks or institutions which have taken those shares as pledge against the borrowed money they would most likely sell it off in the open market and not worry about the price the first priority would be to recover their capital that they have given to the promoters so in this case the price will fall very fast if there is a high pledge of shares. Next let us look at the debtors to sales ratio. This ratio basically compares what was the total debtors in the balance sheet of 2018 and what was the sales in 2018. Then this comparison would help us understand how much were the total accounts receivable or how much payment was still to be received as of the year end against the total sales that the company has done. So as you, let us assume that the company did a sales of 100 CR. Against that 
if the company receives 70 CR or 80 CR or 70, 80 crores against the 100 crores of sales, then that is a good measure. Only 20 CR is left over to be collected from customers or debtors or accounts receivables. All three are interchangeable. So this is a good value. So in my case, the benchmark is that the debtors should not exceed 30% of this year's sales. Meaning, out of whatever sales the company has done in 2018, 70% of that sales has to be coming in by way of cash and the remaining 30%, even if it's on credit or still pending to be collected, that's okay. But it should not exceed 30%. That's a benchmark that I have selected for my, my, my use. In Delco's debtors, were only 8.7% of the sales of that year, of 2018. So this is a good value. National Aluminium's debtor was even lesser, less at 2.1 times of its sales of 2018. So these are good values for both the companies. Next we'll look at the debtor days or how fast the company is collecting payment or money from these account receivables or from the debtors or from the customers. And how well was it collecting three years back? So then we get an idea as to whether the collection days have improved or they have increased further and companies taking more days to collect or less days to collect from where it was in the past. In Delco's current debtor days are 31, meaning the, the company is collecting payment from customers in 31 days. Three years back, it was taking 32 days, so it's, it has improved. National Aluminium's collection days has increased to 9, almost 10 days compared to 6 days in uh, where it was 3 years back. So it has slightly increased, although it is very less compared to Indelco. So it, it basically shows efficiency of the management in collecting payment from its customers quickly. So here we see two things. One is that not only the customers from whom the payment has to be collected is less compared to the current year sales, but also the company is collecting the payment very quickly within less than 10 days on average, three years back also as well as the current data days. Next, let us look at how the company has turned over its inventory into sales. That is the multiple of inventory and sales. The higher the number, the better it is. And then we'll also look at how the company had turned over its inventory into sales three years back. So then that gives us a comparison picture of how well the company is managing its inventory and how fast it is converting that into multiple of sales. Hindelco has converted its inventory 5.8 times more into sales. That is sales was 5.8 times higher than the company's inventory holding of 2018. Whereas three years back also it was at a similar number of 5.6 times. That is sales was 5.6 times higher than the company's inventory holding at the end of that year. National Aluminium seems to be turning over its inventory at a higher rate of 8.1 times. That is sales were 8.1 times higher than the inventory holding. Whereas three years back it was somewhere around 6.1. So this has definitely improved. Now this value cannot be if it's very high between the two of them. That is from three years and the current year. If the, these values are very high then it could just signify that the company's current inventory is very less compared to the sales. Then this ratio will get inflated. So this is just for our understanding. This ratio does not help us in any other way except understanding if the company has managed or how well efficiently it is managing its inventory. Whether it is holding a very high inventory or uh, a very low inventory. Next, we'll look at the return ratios, that is the average operating profit margin of the last five years. And we'll look at the latest net profit margin of 2018. 
and then compare and you also check the, what was the net profit margin a year prior to that that is 2017 we want the operating profit margin to be at least 15 percent because if the company is not earning 15 percent then there are additional expenses that needs to be deducted from this operating profit that the company earns there are, there are expenses like interest cost or finance cost then depreciation and tax so these are the three big expenses and there could be additional exceptional item uh, or exceptional loss or extraordinary loss that also needs to be taken care of from this operating profit so therefore i say 15 percent is a minimum that the companies have to earn because after deducting all these other three four expenses our net profit margin will come down to somewhere around 10 percent so the average opm for hindalco was 9.8 percent which is way too less than our benchmark national aluminium's five years average opm is good at 16.7 percent therefore its latest net profit margin was also around 14 percent after deducting all uh, other expenses like interest depreciation as i discussed earlier and tax but a pr year prior to that that is 2017 national aluminium's npm had fallen to 8.9 percent whereas indelco's 2017 npm was just 1.9 percent and in 2018 it improved to 5.3 so here the company is not very efficient in managing its earn profit values or or earning a margin on its sales as i mentioned earlier the opm has to be at least 15 percent and above net profit margin has to be at least 10 percent and above next we'll look at the current ratio and quick ratio these are the liquidity ratio this helps us understand how well the company can pay off its current liabilities using current assets current means those assets or liabilities which have to be cleared or can be sold within one year liabilities to be cleared in one year and assets to be sold or can be sold within one year those are current liabilities and current assets so we are basically looking at how liquid the company is or how well it can clear off the liabilities that it has to pay off within one year using assets or current assets that it owns and selling those assets to pay off those liabilities so we want the current ratio to be at least one that is the assets should be equal to the current liabilities or it can be even more but if it's less then it means it shows a mismatch between the asset that the company owns and the liability it has to pay in a year's time or within a year's time Indelco and National Aluminium's current liability was good uh, current ratio rather was good at 1.4 times for Indelco and National Aluminium at 1.9 so it shows that the company can very easily clear off its current liabilities using its current assets and in case of quick ratio here we don't consider all assets or all current assets rather we consider only extreme liquid assets as the ones that can be disposed of to pay the current liabilities so here we are trying to test the or uh, it is also known as asset test because it is a quickest way quickest way to clear off the current liabilities using the quick assets that can be sold like cash or uh, bank fds or whatever like which can be quickly converted into cash to pay off those current liabilities here too we want it to be at least one so that signifies the company is liquid enough to pay off those liabilities hindelco's quick ratio has fallen below one times whereas national aluminium is still comfortable at 1.5 times so it has enough liquid assets also to which can be used to sell off and then pay off all the current liabilities next we'll look at the gross block or this is the total assets that the company has 
at its acquisition cost and what was the accumulated depreciation on it meaning of the total assets that the company has shown in its balance sheet as of 2018 how much of that has got depreciated over that particular year and after that whatever remains is the net block and what was the depreciation rate on that net block so as we look at the graph it will be it will become more clear Hindelco's gross block or the total asset that it owns at the acquisition cost was 1,25,000 CR of that 40,000 CR has already been depreciated so remaining whatever remains between 125 and 40 is the net block so in this case 125 minus 40 85 so 85 CR which is showing here at in the net block this is the value of asset that it still owns and will have to depreciate over the number of years and this depreciation value goes into the into the PNL account which then reduces the profit figure therefore we want the depreciation or accumulated depreciation value to be as high as possible which would then suggest to us that very less asset still needs to be depreciated over future year periods and then that wouldn't strain the PNL account and reduce won't reduce the profit in the future now here in case of Indalco almost 85,000 CR of asset still needs to be depreciated over the future years so this would definitely put a strain on the PNL going ahead in the future every year the profit value is decreasing by 4500 in the latest year the depreciation value was 4500 CR on the total assets of 85000 CR for national aluminium the total asset that the company owned at acquisition cost was 8500 CR here itself we can see the size difference between these two companies of how huge the Indelco is compared to national aluminium out of that out of 8500 CR of gross block 1300 CR has already been depreciated and already transferred to PNL account and balance remaining 7325 of the net assets of that 480 CR was depreciated in 2018 so depreciation is an expense which goes into PNL account which then reduces the profit so here what we are trying to understand is how much asset the company had how much has been already expensed out how much is remaining to be expensed and how it is being expensed over the future years so this helps us understand how well the company's profits in the future year will be using because the depreciation expenses are very high for both of these companies because these are capital intensive companies which needs to invest a lot of their cash into buying of fixed assets so this concludes my analysis using the graph now we will switch over back to our table and we will rank it and try to understand how these companies are stacking against each other in terms of different ratios and we will also look at their mat will will distribute these 64 or 69 uh, ratios into six different metrics efficiency solvency cash flow growth metric return metric and valuation metric so since there are only two companies the one with the better score gets the two points and one with the weaker score gets one point in this way I have given scores for all the different ratios and to look at the total final values that these companies have received National Aluminium has received 82 points and Indelco has received 75 points 
Now let us quickly go through each ratio and understand which is better for which company. In terms of face value, National Aluminium is better because it has its split is not as much as Hindelco's. Hindelco's face value is 1 whereas National Aluminium's face value is still 5. So if I, if I have to look at the pure price wise, I can multiply the face value by 5 here in Hindelco to equalize with National Aluminium. And I also have to multiply the current market price by 5 in, in that is 197 into 5. So price wise National Aluminium is much cheap or much cheaper. In terms of fall from its 52 weeks high from where the price was one year back, uh, National Aluminium has fallen 42% whereas Intelco has fallen just 24%. In terms of earnings yield. Uh, National Aluminium has done better at earning 19% on the current price. Price earning wise, last 5 years price earning as well as last 3 years price earning, all 3 are better for National Aluminium. In terms of price to OCF and price to free cash flow, price to book value, price to sales, Profit growth rate, a profit growth rate of last three years, then both the PEGs of five and three years, as well as sales of five years, all of these have been ranked better for Hindalco. Although the book value is almost similar for National Aluminium, otherwise, uh, in terms of all these ratios, National Aluminium ranks lower than Hindalco. In terms of sales growth of last three years, National Aluminium has done better. ROEs of the average five years better for National Aluminium at 6.6%. The recent ROE is better for Hindalco. In terms of ROE growth rate, National Aluminium has done better at growing its ROE from five years back at the rate of 8.2%. In terms of ROCE of the 5 years average and even the recent uh, ROCE of 2018, National Aluminium has done better of generating profits on the capital employed. In terms of return assets also, National Aluminium has done better. Asset turnover was slightly better for Hindelco. Uh, its assets were turned over into sales uh, at almost of what the assets were deployed into the business. In terms of invested capital, that is written on invested capital, was much better for National Aluminium. This we didn't include it in the graph. Here the uh, profit or the written value is the operating profit and the invested capital is the net block, that is the uh, fixed assets less the accumulated depreciation and we add working capital to that. So these are different ways of understanding how the company has written profit on different variables like invested capital or assets or capital employed or equity and so on. This is also known as the core business written. Here National Aluminium has done better at 15%. So whenever we have uh, companies which are capital intensive or companies which have to invest heavily into buying of fixed assets then instead of seeing ROCE, we look at ROIC. We, in this, the depreciation is deducted. So we get a better picture or a better ratio uh, to look at. So in this case, even with high uh, investments in fixed assets, National Aluminium has given a better return on invested capital of 15%. Next, uh, in terms of cash flow conversion, in uh, of the profit, uh, Indelco has done better at 3.7% more than the profit earned. In terms of free cash flow, also it has maximum free cash flow out of its of, out of its cash from operations. In terms of growing its profit above its five years average, Indelco has done better. Profit growth year on year. CFO to annual PAT, that is how much of the profit of the latest 12 months was converted into cash, that is of 2018, 
the conversion was better for Hindalco. Quarterly sales growth was better for Hindalco. Quarterly, that is sequential quarter on quarter sales growth was good for Hindalco again. Even in terms of quarter on quarter profit growth rate as well as net worth. Net worth, it was, it's a huge uh, size difference between the, both these companies. Indelco is almost five times larger or bigger than the national aluminium. In terms of contingent liability, also very less compared to national aluminium's 24% contingent liability to net worth, which we saw earlier. In terms of debt to equity, interest coverage, debt to profits, promoter holding, all these values are good for national aluminium. Here also we see in terms of how much debtors were there against the sales, how fast it was collecting from the customers, three years back how fast it was collecting from the customers, how well the inventory has been converted into sales, three years back also, five years OPM, NPM of the latest year, NPM of the preceding year, that is 2017, current ratio, quick ratio, all of these values are better for national aluminium. In terms of how much of the total gross assets or gross block was already depreciated, Indelco has done better at clearing off 32% already out of this 1,25,000 of gross block. And in terms of depreciation rate, both these companies are depreciating somewhere around 5 to 6 percent, which is good. But in terms of yield, National Aluminium's yield is 13 percent. This is because the price has fallen quite considerably against the last year's dividend that the company paid. So even if, if we expect that the company will keep paying the same dividend, and if we buy the shares of this company now, then we can expect a return of 13% just as dividend. So this is a very good opportunity if provided the company keeps paying the same amount of dividend. Finally, I have arranged all of these above 68, 69 ratios into different metrics as I mentioned earlier. And these metrics are basically composed of different separate individual ratios and each ratio in its order is important for me. For me, efficiency is very important. In Indian companies, management efficiency is very, very important. If the management quality is bad, the sell-off in the company will be huge or very fast. Then how solvent the company is in terms of quick ratio, current ratio and so on. The asset liability mismatch has to be as minimal as possible. Cash flow metric is very important. It is even more important than the written metric, which is based on profit values or earnings. Next, we'll look at how I, for me, the priority is growth metric. That is how quickly it's growing its profits and sales over uh, five years, over annual, as well as quarterly. In terms of written metric, here we are again looking at the earnings value and trying to understand through different variables what is the return it has generated or the companies have generated. Finally, the price is where the price is compared to different variables like book value, earnings, cash, free cash flow, sales, book and so on. So according to me, valuation comes last. That is. We look at valuation only when we have completely analyzed all of these different metrics and understood the efficiency of these companies in managing different metrics. So in terms of efficiency, national aluminium is much better, efficient management. Solvency is better for national aluminium. Cash flow is much better for Hindalco at six points, almost double of uh, national aluminium. In terms of growth metric also, Hindalco is growing much faster. The point difference is 21 and 15. In terms of written metrics, profitability metrics, national aluminium is better at almost twice of Hindalco. 
and valuation wise indelco is much cheaper at 17 points and a national aluminum at 14 points so almost both of them are nearby so when we to finally total both of them although there is an individual uh, ratio wise there is a difference between of 75 and 82 points but when we l compare it by grouping them into matrix we see both the companies have got equal points meaning both the companies are good investment buys so this concludes my analysis of these companies thank you for watching this video